even without anyone in it, there's something about it. There's an energy. The X Factor is different to each person. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's special. I call it a place that people can come and be who they are. It's about being here, being present, and allowing others to be present with you. It can tell you about transformation. I believe that there is a hero in every single one of us. All I want to do is be attuned to when they show up so I can rise up and answer the call. A new kind of courage. Sponsored by your North Texas GMC dealers and Veterans Land Board. We can change the statistic, which is that 22 veterans commit suicide every day in this country. It's a human issue. How do you stop the downward spiral? Empowering people. When they fall, you say, hey, it's progress, not perfection. Do it again. Do it a little bit wiser, do it a little bit harder, and you do it again. That's what people take away from this program. Welcome to our gym. This is a place of starting over. My job here is to create optimization for you. Okay, that's it. It's my job to create optimization for you, right? That's opportunity to grow. It's up for you guys to work and to put in, to put in the time so that there are breakthroughs, right? So all I can do is apply the opportunity and then we can see how far we go and how short of a time. So we have nine weeks. Okay, nine weeks may sit, sound like a long time, but it'll be gone like that, man. Everyone who comes here is looking for that new start. And there's a point in this nine weeks where something's gonna get hard, you're gonna get sick, something's gonna hurt. Not injury hurt, but just pain that's got to be pushed out. We're going to have to flesh that out, okay? So in those times, rely on each other. Rely on the staff, okay? Because we're going to be the ones that fill the void and help you and pick you up in those times. So as a community, we're all strengthened together. Just honesty is everything. This thing with open transparency, it works, man. If we start to try to find an easier, softer way and it's excuses, I'm going to call you out on that. Remember, like, what we want to target is things that are like... Man, I know I want to do that, but it's going to be really hard. Like, let us create the kind of achievement path for you, and then you guys are just going to walk it. Many of them are wounded warriors, and most of them are amputees. Because I can promise you, a lot of my best games in football were where it was when I was overcoming an injury or I was sick, or like I had to get through something, and it took my mind off of it, and I had like the best game of my whole life. When we're vulnerable, that's an opportunity for the rest of the community of the tribe to lift us up. We have breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. I want to find out about how you got hurt, uh, what happened, what's the road been since you got hurt that's led you here. I got hurt in Afghanistan, it was a dismounted IED. I was injured in Afghanistan in 2010. Um, stepped on an IED, lost both legs immediately. I was shot in a gun battle in Iraq through the left knee joint and it caused me to have my leg amputated above the knee. Being able to just be, uh, I don't know, nobody really knows me here, but I just want to be myself again. That's kind of hard for, I guess, for y'all to understand that, but just to uh, just find myself. There you go. There you go. Right. I actually understand that really well, because this is where I started over too. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Oh. Oh. There it is. Right there. It's over. Woo. What was this first? We are. David Vibora, founder of the Adaptive Training Foundation. So you guys know me. All of you know me. As a matter of fact. So David Vibora, founder, head trainer, whatever you want to call it. Don't get too formal. I'm a veteran too, but not of the military. Of football. In 2008, I was drafted as a St. Louis Ram, played there uh, 9 and 10, and then played for the Seattle Seahawks in 11. Had a catastrophic shoulder injury uh, in 2011 with the Seahawks. It resulted in a couple different surgeries. Uh, as I rehabbed from that, I, frankly, I got healthy enough to play in the league, but as a result of numerous concussions, traumatic brain injuries, as I, as I looked at what my life was and where I saw my life going, as I started this gym, and I recognized uh, that my gifts could match the needs of those right in front of me. It was time to turn the page and I never thought I would say those words. I thought they would literally have to drag me off of a football field uh, when my body had failed, but it just turns out that I found something that had such a profound impact on my life that I couldn't stop giving. Originally, it was just a gym for elite athletes, 
because that's all I knew. But then I met a man that changed everything. I met Travis Mills, one of five living quadruple amputees who lost all four limbs serving our great nation in Afghanistan. It was like a, the hot chick at the bar. I saw a guy with no arms, no legs, and I was amazed by the way he was moving and the biomechanics that went into just him being upright. I walked right up to him. I said, when was the last time you worked out? Said, Look, I don't want to make you feel like an idiot, right? <laughs> but I don't have arms or legs. Immediately, I said, well, why does that matter? You know, I understand that you were wounded, uh, but you're healed now. Even though you look different, what, what, what's keeping you from tapping back into the physicality and, and competing physically? You know? and, and he was willing to go, man, this guy's bold, but he's confident, and I'm gonna take a, take a chance on him. So what are you most afraid of? He said, falling. Gravity catches up real quick. No arms, no legs, remember? I told you this before. And so we used that as his first beginning of training. I used bands to catch him, or, or my hands, and at times I let him fall. He began to desensitize that fear uh, he began to trust himself and trust me, and through that we had mental and physical breakthrough after breakthrough. I recognized uh, when he was doing 100 pound sled pulls on the turf over here and looking at my NFL players training at the same time and going, oh, does your pinky toe hurt? That's a shame, I wish I had toes. Suddenly the collective group all had a level and a gear beyond their known capacity. So what I watched was a transformation for all people. It was really the genesis of me starting ATF, the Adaptive Training Foundation. Through that, I recognized, wait a second, there's probably more people like him out there. People like retired Marine Corporal Blake Watson. I uh, deployed to Afghanistan. I took a step out away from the wall, and when I did, I knelt down on top of a pressure plate IED. The IED exploded, lost my left leg above the knee. You know, I went from being in the best shape of my life to being an, you know, being an elite member of a group uh, doing this incredible stuff that I was doing to having all that taken away from me and my ability to walk and my ability to run and play sports and do things like that that I thought were normal um, shipped away from me in one moment. We brought him into our redefined program at ATF. It's nine weeks long. There it is. Oh, mother... May not sound like a lot. I think you want to say good words. But it is. That sucks. When you've lost a limb, and rehabilitation has only gotten you so far. It's like my drug, man. I mean, you know, I sat around for six months after retiring, uh, trying to figure out what in the world I was gonna do with my life. I had no sense of purpose, no direction. You know, I just looking for a reason to even wake up every single day. This is a place where adaptive athletes can feel safe to challenge themselves, to push further, and have a group to belong to. Coming in here, man, only for an hour a day, three times a week, there was still three hours a week that someone wanted me somewhere and I had a purpose. And so I just embraced it. I made this place my sanctuary and I dove head first into it. There's a quote we use in here quite often and it talks about, don't let what you can't do affect what you can do. Uh, that was the motto that I lived my life in football and I still live my life. And so now to take that same mindset and apply it inside the gym, it's, it's amazing to watch these people that kind of embody what I felt like I did for so long in football. It was overcoming all odds and not letting an obstacle uh, be a reason why you ran into that roadblock. What Adaptive Training Foundation does so brilliantly is understand like, hey look, it, it, this may be a block, but how do we adapt and modify around it so that we're still pursuing a better version? There's struggle and triumph, but what that, that struggle does is it offers the opportunity for triumph. Without rain, you couldn't enjoy sunshine. And so for us here, it's, it's about making sure that they understand the mentality that's necessary. Uh, and that my football career did a lot of that for me. When I retired from the NFL, I thought I started a gym to enhance athletic ability. I thought it was about the physical. But instead, it's about the hope. Recalibrating the physical body and feeding the souls of my clients. There's a lot more things I could do uh, with, my <coughs> with my leg strength that I just wasn't able to before. You know, I can hop down, open a door if I need to. Uh, I can lift weights. I can, on the Supercat machine, you know, the first time I came in here, I could probably press 125 pounds on that thing. It was real weak, my knee gave out. Uh, but I'd say a couple weeks ago, I did 600 pounds. You know, so that's, <laughs> that just speaks volume to what we could do inside this gym if you just embrace it. Blake is the glue that binds this place. Welcome to our gym. He used to serve from behind the sight of a rifle, but he now serves behind the lens of a camera. 
watching the transformations that happen and the miracles that happen. Where you can see in their eyes, it clicks. It clicks over and they actually fully grasp onto it. They trust the program and they dive head in. That's an epic shot of the end. So, uh, <laughs> that was great. Blake tells ATF stories, hero stories, just like his. And who better to do it? So I hired him. It makes me not care if I sit here and work on it for six hours after work when I get home and then I work on it for eight hours when I'm at work. It doesn't matter because it's, you know, what I'm getting to do, I'm getting to tell these guys' story. It needs to be captured and it needs to be told. You know, look what I did. I overcame this. You know, I didn't let the fact that I got shot in the head with an RPG affect me. I'm going to go run a, an, an Iron Man. You know, middle finger, top man. Thank you. The body is like an instrument. If you work with it enough, you can play beautiful music, even with some broken strings. This is Sergio Gonzalez. I love music. Music is definitely my medicine, for sure. I was hurt. Afghanistan in 2010, stepped on a landmine. Suffered some uh, muscle loss. Um, some bone loss, had some bone grass. From that first day I met him, he wanted just one thing. There you go. To be himself again. I just want to be myself again. Yeah. You can see it in yeah. his face. Faster on the way up, throw your hands. Yes, that's, now we're almost jumping. That's what I want. And then we got to it. Bet you it's a PR. I don't even have to look at the clock. I bet you it's a PR. We uncovered that he is a fighter. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, dig in, dig in. Throw your hands. Throw your hands. Throw your hands. Pain? What's that? He embraced the suck every day. He was relentless. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, keep going. There it is. There it is. We are. 49.3. Oh, it's tall. What? Yeah, I'll never forget about this place. I'm never going to forget about anybody here. I have my motivation back, I have my drive to be better, to challenge myself every day like I used to. You know, I'm not just a guy who had a very short-lived military career, you know, it's a place I can come and uh, truly show what kind of athlete I am and who I am inside and not. And you're doing a lot better now. Week three, yes sir. Every day is hard, every day is challenging. Yeah, extend, push, extend. Push, extend, I'm exhausted. Like when I leave out of here, I'm dripping, I'm just drenched. I go through like three or four shirts because I'm so sweaty. That's Army Sergeant Mike Smith, who lost his arm in 2012. A lady hit me on my motorcycle. She was texting and driving, hit me, it threw me over the guardrail on the highway in Nashville, Tennessee, and before I could hit the ground, another vehicle came and knocked my arm off. This is after deployments. So I went through that moment of, I served my country, senior NCO, how could I lose my arm on a motorcycle versus in combat, like what I've been trained to do my whole adult life. It's easy to think like that, but I started this program because of Wounded Warriors. It wasn't until after I got it going that I realized how many more civilians are out there who could benefit from what we're doing. There's over 200,000 amputations in America every year. 15,000 new spinal cord injuries, over 200,000 living spinal cord injuries. These are statistics that prove that this need is not just central to veterans uh, or civilians. We now have ATF classes where we mix it all up. No two injuries are the same but everyone's all going through kind of the same struggles in life. You got that avalanche coming towards you, you gotta get out of there. Warriors are sweating alongside civilians, both with incredible stories. It resembles exactly what, uh, to the line unit I was in, to my platoon, and just the love. And they inspire each other. Lawrence, have you met him? Hey! Let's do this. Nah, no pull. Lawrence Green is one of our warriors. He lost both legs 
in a motorcycle. Right, get, your, get yourself balanced. Right. He'll make you work today. Go for it. I got y'all, D-Way. <laughs> His injuries were barely healed. Okay, stick it. Get your weight forward. Stick it. Stick it. Stick it. Forward. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I'm not gonna help you. I'm not gonna help you. Come on. Hip through. Turn. You want to fix it? When he came to us, he was determined to become the best version of himself. Every single muscle in your body is firing right now. <laughs> One of his classmates is Angela Bridges. I had a virus that attacked my heart. So I had a large blood clot in my left ventricle, my heart. It was about a handful. Pieces kept breaking off going to my leg. And so we ended up doing amputation and removing the clot. Regardless of how people get here, we focus on building them up. Not just physically, but mentally. In this environment working out, like I'm not any different than anybody. Sometimes the first breakthrough is just accepting what used to be a limb is now a nub. At first, I didn't want to look at it, I didn't want to touch it. I was just, yeah, because they're telling you, you know, you're supposed to massage it and desensitize it, and I, I couldn't, I was mad at it. Nine, ten, oh, oh. oh. there it is. Acceptance of a lost limb is a big thing. Getting a new limb is even bigger. I get to try on a leg. Yeah, it's a pretty good day. The advances in prosthetics is tremendous. And it's just profound to see uh, the abilities for these guys to be increased because of what modern technology can do. It's just been a long road. It's been almost five years, so it's almost become numb to the feeling. I'm just ready for it to finally, finally happen. So it's got a gyroscope, it kind of detects where it is in space. Um, and you know, when it detects so much weight on the toe, the knee will release and kick. So much weight on the heel, it'll lock up and be stiff. You know, this computerized technology continues to advance. If nothing else, it's hope. It's just a reason to wake up and push forward tomorrow. It's just some little things that you can hold on to like that. Because now I can go in and I can get back in the gym in the morning and I can get upright. And that's just one step closer to finally not having to sit in a wheelchair anymore. Awesome. Tonight's an amazing night and a, a, an emotional one. I wanna uh, pause for a second if we could and say a quick prayer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Blake was taken to the hospital today. They've sort of narrowed down some things and ruled some things out, which is the good news, but they're still not sure what's going on. If you would, bow your heads with me in prayer. Lord God, we just lift Blake Watson up tonight. Um, Blake means so much to every single one of us. In this moment, Lord, we, uh, we know that you're behind everything and everything happens for a purpose, Lord. And so we just trust you in this, in this moment, in this tough moment. We just love you, Lord, and we just love Blake. And we just thank you that um, you're a, an all-knowing all God and that your hand is behind this. Amen. Uh, you know, brother of mine is, is in the hospital right now. And uh, tonight I'll definitely be heavy hearted for that. I know he would want us to go on and, and still enjoy this night. Just gonna eat and enjoy the company and then get sad later. That night was tough. Not just because we didn't know what was wrong with Blake. Graduation is always hard. It is really hard for me. Uh, each, each one of these groups become family. Each one of these people, they have a profound impact on me. After nine weeks at ATF. You love every single one of these guys and gals like your own family and you make sure that they know that. And they're allowed to have Sir. rough times. I mean, we all are. The hard times are a given, it's life. And, the, and that necessary adversity has helped you to become a better version of yourself. And that's what we preach here. So if you can do it in the gym, why can't we do it outside the gym? And that's part of just living life together. Sergio finally got out of that dark place and got what he'd been wanting. Ever since coming here, it's been really easy to leave my excuses and all that BS at the door. You know, I, uh, I can come here, I've come here this past nine weeks and just felt like, uh, I, like I just, I'm just accepting and I, can, I have a place where I can come and prove myself, you know. My military career was pretty short-lived, but you know, my life's not and I still got a lot more to live for. And uh, uh, David, Maddie, everybody involved, you know, I just love each and every one of y'all. Athletes especially, you know, y'all are truly an inspiration to my life and I'm always gonna hold this place close to my heart. Like I said, day one, I said, what do you want out of this program? I said, I just want, I just want to be me again. I want to find myself, I want to get back to 
the old me and you know I can I'm definitely there and I'm there's nothing uh, nothing in my way anymore and I just it's uh it's all the sky's the limits now the work that you guys have put in has been profound and it really has been an amazing transformation so really proud of each of you this is a family and all the work that y'all put in and the hours you, you know the time I know y'all enjoy it but this is something that's so it's so meaningful to have people come and become a part of this story and, and champion these athletes it's really awesome With conviction, I can say that every person I've ever trained in this place could not get what we've offered them and what they've taken anywhere else. The athletes of the Adaptive Training Foundation remind me every day that I have to surrender to win. I'm in here working out, training, trying to get back into shape so I could get on some prosthetics. Oh, this gym means a lot to me. That made me realize that I'm capable of much more than I ever thought I was. If there's one thing I'm proud of, I'm proud of the individual stories. And I'm blessed by each one of them. This gym is special. If you can't feel the atmosphere right now, something is wrong with you. You probably need to leave and go home. <laughs> like, if you can't feel like how close everybody is, people that I've never met in my life are just... I love you too. <laughs> From there, the happy ending got even better. It turned out that Blake just had to have his gallbladder removed. I say just because, well, it's Blake. I knelt down on top of a bomb and I was here, the gallbladder ain't stopping me. After Blake got out of the hospital, he went to amazing new heights. Several of our guys did. But that's a story to be continued. A new kind of courage. Sponsored by your North Texas GMC dealers and Veterans Land Board.